Hey, Cartman, I had to ride my back here. My behind is killing me. You're behind? I have to say behind because I get shocked if I say... We have about 50 animators doing shifts. They work around the clock 24 hours, 75 TDs working around the clock. Um, two shifts. It's been 16 hour days every day, Sunday through Sunday. We're at the office 24 7. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We are at that office. Sleep there almost every night. I don't remember the last time we weren't at the office. And it just takes that kind of commitment. We've got uh, editing staff that consists of a half a dozen people uh, working in shifts around the clock. Audio department that consists of uh, upwards of 20 people right now. You know, we expect a lot of our people, but when they show up to the office, we're already there. And when they leave, we're still there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they can see how hard we work, and that mm -hmm. just, I think that inspires them to work all the harder. Yep. For us. I'm sorry they're not in right now. Would you like me to take a message for them? I've not seen them once in the office I don't, here. I have so no idea what they look like. I haven't met Matt or Trey yet. I've never actually seen them. I'm sorry they're not in right now. Would you like their voicemail? I'm sorry they're not in the office right now. Would you like their voicemail? Voicemail. Voicemail. Thank you. God damn it. <laughs> See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Those you can be out here, you work. work your ass off, you come out, you're in your hot tub and it goes off, you don't even turn it on. And the hot tub goes off, you know? It's hard to live here. It's hard on it's hard on us. Yeah, you know, we wish we could live in Colorado where things were simpler. <laughs> did South Park, the reason that we did any of the reason we came out to Hollywood was be to get our band going, you know? And so we thought, okay, well, either you go and you make a demo and you shop it around and you play some gigs, or, you know, get a hit TV show going, get, you know, get some major movies out there, and then use that to sort of position your way into a, a band. And we thought, well, this way seems a lot easier. Frosty kill Kitty! We were sleeping on, you know, we were sleeping at friends' houses, had no money, and then one Fox executive had seen a cartoon we had made and it was sort of Christmas based. Whoa, whoa, now tell me what happened slowly. Okay, we're just building a snowman, and all of a sudden, he gained a life. I told him, I said, don't put the magic hat on the snowman, and he did it anyway, and, and then he killed our friend Kenny, and now he's gonna kill everybody. Did he look kind of like this? Yeah, kind of like that. Mm -hmm, exactly. He said, make me another Christmas video that I can send out as a Christmas card. And, you know, he gave us like 700 bucks and we went and made this five minute short called The Spirit of Christmas. Hanukkah sucks. Don't you oppress me, fat boy. Don't call me fat, but Then don't belittle my people, you fat ass. Ah, damn it, don't call me fat, you but son of a bitch. And we didn't even put our names on it in credits because it was just a Christmas card for that guy to use. Behold my glory. What are you doing in South Park, Jesus? I come seeking retribution. <gasps> He's come to kill you because you're Jewish, Kyle. Oh, I'm sorry, Jesus. Don't kill me. Somebody showed me the short, which had just been done that, for that Christmas. I thought it was hysterical. So I called and said, get them in here right away. We still thought it was sort of a big joke, you know, that it was never actually going to happen. It was just one of these, because it sort of happens in Hollywood all the time, you know, like suddenly there'll be some heat on you and on your project, but then it goes away, you know? So we were sort of taking it all with a grain of salt. <laughs> and then you end up Leaf Garrett. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you wake up and you're Leaf Garrett. Yeah. And you're on behind the music and they're talking about when the bottom fell out of your world. That does it! Now listen! Why is it that everything today has involved things either going in or coming out of my ass? I'm sick of it! It's completely immature! Hey! It's happening again! Now do you believe us, Cartman? You guys can't scare me. I know you're making it all up. Cartman, there's an 80-foot satellite dish sticking out of your ass. Sure, you guys. Whatever. It was 
like a lot of money. Yeah. We more went, money than we'd ever we went seen right in one to Las place. Vegas. Like that. Yeah. We were in Vegas the next day. Two thousand dollars in G strings. Yeah. And then we came back broke again. Since they the success they've had kind of success that a rock star would have, going from obscurity to just tremendous exposure and becoming movie stars and all of these things that go along with it. But they have really stayed incredibly grounded and I think they've changed in terms of their lifestyle, but they haven't changed in who they themselves are as really responsible, really terrific guys. The creators of this program are, 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 are a, a couple of 30-year-old uh, third graders. Uh, apparently, their moms failed in the socialization process, and they've got the morals of dogs, in my honest opinion, and worse. Hey, you squatty ass What the f is wrong with you? You must be some kind of To be able to ignore a crying child! Whoa, dude! You know what you like? You like to Hey, Wendy, what's up? South Park has grossed over $300 million in, rev in merchandising revenue since it's been on the air. Don't get us wrong, you know, people think, oh, you came and did this show and now you're big sellouts. The truth is, I mean, we were sellouts to begin with. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, that was the plan all along. When we were in college fantasizing about all this, we were like, we gotta get to Hollywood and just start selling out immediately. Paramount Pictures and Warner Brothers present South Park. Kyle Broslovsky. This is sweet. Stan Marsh. Where did they come up with this stuff? Eric Cartman. Ah! That movie has warped my fragile little mind. Kenny McCormick. Ah! Chef. Have you ever heard of the Emancipation Proclamation? I don't listen to hip hop. Satan. Is sex the only thing that matters to you? Yeah! I love you. And Big Gay Al. You big silly. <laughs> it's not just another day in the park. I think it's going to be big. Damn, dude, I'm huge. People are waiting with Baby Beth because, I mean, if it's off the hook on TV, it's got to be totally out of the box on the big screen. After the movies, we shall go where we Top animation minds from around the world have collaborated with the top foreign animators from Japan with a budget of over $630 million to bring you the most advanced animation ever seen by the human eye. Animation process, well, trainos. I, I, I yeah. Um, there's um. A lot of stuff with the animation process. The thing is, is that the animation process, it's, you know, really complex. We start off the animation process. We just all cutting out all the construction paper. Oh, yeah. Design everything, cut it out, cut all the construction paper out. Hmm. Then we scan that into computers so that we can move and manipulate them. And then it's like, um, you know, getting the voices in there. Then it's all dumped into this editing machine and we can look at sort of each shot and do whatever we need to with it. That is the animation process. Let me have some candy, Cartman. Oh, let's see. Uh, nope, I don't have any Jewish candy. Like you really need all that chocolate, fat boy. Ba 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 ba. Shh, the movie's starting. The first thing, when you make a movie, you've, you know, you go through this little class. Paramount gives you a class on story structure. And so Matt and I had to go to that class. It was every Tuesday and Thursday night from 9 p.m. to 11.30. And there was about 20 of us in there, and they taught us, you know, how, how you structure your film as woman, Miss Appleby. And, and it was like, she basically would say, okay, start the movie, have some stuff happening. Young man, you will tell Mr. Mackey this instant where you heard all these horrible phrases. I... I... We can't tell you. We all took a sacred oath and swore ourselves to secrecy. It was the Terrence and Fennett movie. Dude! And then, like, 10 minutes in, some big stuff needs to happen. We must rid ourselves of anything Canadian! Burn it all! And then right about 30 minutes in, that's your first act, so you need like some stuff that changes that stuff. 
It has come to be. The four horsemen are drawing nigh. The time of prophecy is upon us. I love when you get all biblical, Satan. You know exactly how to turn my crank. And then you go to Act 2, and at the end of Act 2, we have all this stuff that then turns all that stuff on its ear. Throw the switch, Mr. Garrison. Hey, I'm supposed to be anonymous. And, like, all these things, is all Act 3 is all these things that, like, gives reason for all this stuff before that. Kyle, all those times I said you were a big dumb Jew, I didn't mean it. You're not a Jew. Ah! Yes, I am. I am a Jew, Cartman. No, no, Kyle, don't be so hard on yourself. You know, people are gonna be like, whoa. You know, because just, like, how much stuff? And how, and how stuff in Act 2 came from Act 1, but then the Act 1 stuff sort of related to the things in Act 3. You know, it's, it's pretty amazing. Attention, students. We are now enforcing a new dress code at South Park Elementary. Terrence and Phillips shirts are no longer allowed in school. Anyone wearing a Terrence and Phillips shirt is to be sent home immediately. Well, I mean, it just, it all is, comes from our life. You know, if you look at the movie, if you were to see the movie, you just, I mean, it's obvious. Okay, Kenny, I'll bet you $100 you can't light a fart on fire. <laughs> But it's like there's stuff and there's, you know, all these things. And it's like you get halfway through and you're, so you're like, wow, there's been like 45 minutes worth of stuff. And then another 45 minutes of stuff is still coming. And I think that that, that came from our lives, you know, because we definitely had stuff happen to us. Chef, how do you make a woman like you more than any other guy? Oh, that's easy. You just got to find the clitoris. Huh? Oops. What does that mean, find the clitoris? Uh, forget I said anything. Move along, children. You're holding up the line. You guys, do you know where I can find the clitoris? The what? What, is that like finding Jesus or something? <clears throat> we have had how many versions of the script? Maybe like 42 versions of the script. And we have to make copies for the entire crew, and we have to shred them every time we get a new script. So we have tons and tons of bags out front of shredded paper. So no one can copy them and distribute them outside of the office. There's, there's been some people that, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to put it on the internet and tell them when we just grab them. You know, I'll kick your ass if you tell anybody. You know, and you got to go like, you got to get all mean and go, I'll kick your ass. And they don't, they don't tell anybody. You know, it works. We have to hurry. We run to lose with the other kids at 10. You realize that by doing this, we could be grounded for two, perhaps even three weeks. We're willing to take that risk. Then let's go. It's like we're always down at the office, you know, going, hey, go. You know, like, hey, good job. I don't see them anymore, they're, they're just too busy. And we'll like, we'll see someone animating something and we'll go, hey, that's really cool looking. I'm always in here and they never, they never like to talk to me anyway. It's you know, really, yeah, it's really important to boost people's spirits. Lot, we spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, one time, actually, I had a phone patch with them in Bali um, and that was pretty exciting, you know, cause Trey actually took some time out for that. Well, morale is the most important thing. You know, I think it was Rommel who said, the troops morale is in their plate. Yeah, Matt Sona and I have developed quite a, you know, strong bond through all this. We're always there, you know, saying, hey, you know, try it this way. <laughs> <laughs> just being down there, you know, just to show your face, and the animators are working and they're doing their thing, just so you can be like, no! You know, and it's like, okay, we want to show you this first scene, and they show it to you and you go, no! You know, you're all stupid, I hate you! And then then, you know, it motivates them. It gets them going on the next thing. And so that's the most important thing. You know, you hear the score, and you're in there, and it's like, what is this? Hmm. Map. Our sources have told us that the Canadians are preparing for our invasion, so we must use Tartan. Each battalion has a specific code name and mission. Battalion 5, raise your hands. You will be the all-important first attack wave, which we will call Operation Human Shield. Hey, wait a minute! When we got the movie deal, we demanded 500 pairs of fresh socks. And we got them, too. And we got them, actually. 500 pairs of fresh socks that's every actually, day. That's not bull****, actually. <laughs> So we demanded all these 500 pairs of new socks. So every day, you get a brand new pair of socks right out of the bag. And then if you, 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 know, you walk up in the kitchen, you step on a little water or something on the floor, take them off, throw them away, 
fresh new pair of socks. Kenny, can you hear me? Oh, shit, dude. How are you feeling, son? Oh, it's so cold. Great. Son, I have some bad news. We accidentally replaced your heart with a baked potato. You have about three seconds to live. When we had, like, we were at this party and George Clooney came up to us and he was just begging us. Yeah. Just like, please, you guys, oh, I want to be in South Park so bad. And we bad. were trying to, like, we were with all these girls, we were trying to be cool, and he was like, totally. He's all drunk, he's like, this is, the, this is the cool show, I want to do voice. And we're just like, okay, dude, you know, fine. Damn it! It never gets any easier! Mindy Driver, she asked me, like, one morning, we are yeah. in bed, she's like, can I be in your movie? I was like, yeah, you yeah. can be in the movie. Then we just yes. cut her. Then we just cut I her. promise you can be in the movie, Minnie. Then we just you cut know, her and out. You sort of get what you want. The machinery of the V-chip is very simple. It is placed under the child's skin where it emits a small shock of electricity whenever an obscenity is uttered. Like Eric Idle, you know, even though he's, he's you know, Monty Python, he's like an icon to us, you still gotta be in there going, you know, no, stupid. It's like, you know, training, a, like, it's like training a dog. Like he'll do a line and do it, and it's like, and it's like do it, can you do it louder? And he'll do it the same way, and you go, what did I just say? I mean, I know you're Monty Python, but you're, you're being stupid right now. He cried. Well, yeah, he, he did like, cry. He broke down at one don't point. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. You know, and you're just like, That's pathetic. we've had Mini Driver in here. You know, we've had George Clooney in here. And who do you think you are? You know, you think you're all bad? You know, you want your ass kicked? That's, I mean, seriously, that's how firm you got to get. Patient B5, would you step out here, please? Patient B5 here has been fitted with the new V chip. Oh, my head hurts. Don't worry about that. The plot. Well, the plot. It's been a long time since we read the script, so... We, I mean, I'm not sure what the plot is, but, but I'm sure that... The thing is that our plot, I remember when we wrote it, we it was, had all this stuff. And happening. it was really, really good. Yeah. I mean, it was a good plot. Yeah. What do you think, Stan? <laughs> Damn it! I remember, have we tested the movie? Yeah, we showed it to this guy, Steve. Mm. And, uh, and afterwards, we're like, you know, Steve... What do you think? And he was like, you know, he seemed to think, he was like, wow, there's a lot of stuff in that movie. And that's when we knew, we, we'd nailed it. And we even, we gave him a little sheet to fill out, like, what number he would rate it. And so, you know, if Steve's right, this is going to be a huge hit. Yeah, he gave it a six, I think. Yeah. Out of ten. Philip Ashes of Fire has been rated R by the Motion Picture Association of America. You have to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. But why? Because this movie has naughty language. The MPAA is all these like 90 year old right wing fascist communists. And and they, they sit around a little table and they watch the movie and they go, oh. Just remember what the MPAA says. Horrific, deplorable violence is okay as long as people don't say any naughty words. They don't let you talk to the MPAA. You can't say anything to them, because, boy, if we could, I'll tell you one thing. There's not one person in the MPA who has ever rocked in their life, you know? Listen yeah, to, totally. Listen to Strauss and crap like that. And Sting. Comedy Central presents Central's SPF 100, all summer long. Reason number 17 is brought to you by the Coca-Cola card. Get a Coke, use your card, get hooked up. When South Park's away, the man show. Comedy Central. I'm super, thanks for asking. All things considered, I couldn't be better, I'm a fan. I'm feeling super, now nothing bugs me. Everything is super when you're, don't you think? I look cute in this hat. All movies have music. I mean, I assume ours would have music too, probably. I think you have to when you when you do a movie. They they're always like, you know, put music in your movie. What would Brian Boitano do if he was here right now? He'd make a plan and he'd follow through. That's what Brian Boitano do. When Brian Boitano was in the Olympic skating for the gold, he did two south cows and a triple. That's while wearing a blindfold. For the album, we we did all these. We did all the, the songs from the movie, and we got all these great bands to cover them. And we're like, okay, the best song in the movie is what would Brian Boitano do? What is the coolest band we could get to do this? You know, and we went through all these bands. We're like, Van Halen, no, because you know David Ross is gone, and it's like ACDC, well, now they're getting old. And it was just like, dude, us. 
Like, who's going to rock more than us? going to be like whoa people are going to see after the movie it's going to be like our band's going to be like whoa you know because it's going to be like it all of a sudden we're going to be like huge hugest band ever ever seriously because we, we, we rock we won't stop until we make it to the top that's for sure because we have a dream i think the legacy of south park will definitely be you know our band I mean, people look back and say South Park, the TV show, is the beginning of the, our band. Yeah, because we talk about, like, that was the when they're point. doing our behind the music, you know, it'll be like, it'll be like one of those things where, like, you know, like, you watch behind the music, and you didn't even realize that Kenny Rogers was in this other band before he was, like, solo. So it'll be like this other thing with us, you know, it'll be like this big band, it'll be like, but before they were stars, you know, they did this stupid little cartoon, you know, and, and everyone will be like, I kind of remember that, that those guys did that, you know, like, well, I just knew them as like the coolest rockers ever in the history of music. Then everyone will put the two together and be like, that's weird, that's how they got their start, you know? Wait. Don't do it, Cartman! Wait. I'm warning you! Okay, okay. I'm getting pretty sick of him calling my mom. Cause I'm a bitch, she's a big fat bitch, she's the biggest bitch in the whole wide world. He's a stupid bitch, and everyone's a bitch, she's a bitch to all the boys and girls. Come on, you all know the words. 